Well, hello, welcome to Rebel Nation. This is the show that we talk UNLV sports. Joining me, as always, is Rebels beat writer Mark Anderson, my guy, Mr. Anderson. I'm Brian Salmon, and Saturday was the day that UNLV, the football team, really could make a huge statement by defeating Arkansas State in Arkansas and improving to 3-1 and one on the season, kind of getting their way next to a bowl game. But UNLV, they fell. 27-20, I guess, Mark, my big question is, what does UNLV take away from this game? What's the biggest takeaway from a game which they played pretty well against a team yeah. that's pretty good on the road? Yeah, they matched up with Arkansas State very well. They probably really should have won the game. I agree. If Brandon <laughs> Presley doesn't muff the punt, he just lets it go. That alone could get him the win. But, of course, the biggest thing is the passing game. You know, 5 of 21, 23 yards, that's just – That's not good. It's not going to cut it. No. And, and I, always, I always said that Armani doesn't need to be a 60% guy, and I believe that. But you have to get – You've got to complete something? You've got to get – you've got you to gotta be good enough – where opposing defenses aren't just going to go, go defend the running game. And that's going to be the problem when they run against better defenses. If he can't take pressure off the running game, then they're going to be in trouble. No, you're right. If you look at some of the stats from the game, which you alluded to, uh, uh, Armani Rogers really did not have a very good game. He was what? He said 5 for 21, 23 yards. He had zero touchdowns. He had three interceptions. Right. But as always, as he's been recently, he's been rushing the ball right. very well. How about that? 181 yards rushing on 26 carries and the touchdown as well. And Lexington Thomas also rushed the ball very well. UNLV, I mean, they're running the ball very well. Right. They're not throwing the ball very well. How, how tough does that make it for them moving forward if, like you said, they have no passing game? Well, and that's the problem because you don't want to take Armani out of the lineup. You no, know, you can't. He's, he's, your, he's got to be your quarterback. And I don't know that you substitute, like, Max Gilliam in just to, on occasion to throw um, the ball. I don't think that works either, you no, know. That'll kill his confidence yeah, as well. You got to, I, I just got to, you got to figure it out with Armani to find, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's in the game planning. How do you get easy pat completions for him, er, especially early on, yeah. build his confidence, build some rhythm. You know, they got to they gotta think, they probably do think about that. But, I mean, maybe that's the answer, right? You know, but they, they got to do something because, Against, you know, against the Prairie Views of the world and the UTEPs of the world, you, you can get it. away with just a running <laughs> game. And, and against some of the lower-level Mountain West teams, you probably can. They, they might be able to get away with that against New Mexico. Yeah. San Diego State, no. It, it's not, it's not <laughs> going to happen. State? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just not going to happen. So they, they, they got to figure it out. They got to find a way to, to get him to be more accurate. And, and, and I think, you know, the thing is, it's not like he's, he doesn't have an in him. We've seen times where he's, he's done pretty well, and he's got a huge arm, and, and he can make plays down the field. And maybe it's not all him either. Maybe his receivers aren't getting open either. That can be part of it, you know. Um, maybe this is where you see losing Devontae Boyd really becomes the anchor. Uh, so. Yeah, that's true. And as you said, um, you know, some game planning could really help, like maybe a, a, right. you know, a screen here or there, just like a five-yard hitch or something that kind of gets him going would absolutely help. And if you looked at the numbers from the game with Arkansas State, I mean, they racked up 333 yards total as opposed to 396 for Arkansas State. So, I mean, the game was close in that respect. Uh, but, again, UNLV would fall 27-20. to 20. They're still 2-2 two and two on the season. Right. And we talked about this coming into this game, that if they lost this game, things, you know, the world isn't going to come right. to an end. Because right. most people figure they'd be 2-2 two and two at this point anyway, right? Oh, yeah, everything's still in front of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I, you know they, I would imagine they'll be favored against New Mexico if they can take care of business there. They're 3-2. and two. Suddenly they're halfway to bowl yeah. eligibility. And so things are still looking pretty good for them. Uh, it's just, you know, and, and the, the accuracy thing has been a question all along. So this isn't new. It's just that the numbers are so stunning in this game. It, it, it makes you wonder you know, is this something that they can really take care of? And, you know, two of those three interceptions were while they're driving. Uh, those were just killer plays. If, if they at least get field goals out of those plays, it's probably a different game. What does Amarni think that he's Derek Carr? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> a little shot at the Raiders on it, yeah. No, so all right, you alluded to it as well. Coming up is New Mexico. They enter Mountain West Conference right. play. New Mexico, if you look at... The, the screen and, and, and how this game kind of is going to play out. New Mexico's 2-1 and one on the season, so they're, they're not horrible right now. Uh, UNLV 2-2 two and two on the season. The game is October 6th, so they have a bye week. They have right. time to prepare for the game. It's at Sam Boyd Stadium. Right now, UNLV, they're undefeated at home. They've won both of their, their home games. They've lost both of their road games. Uh, and looking at that game, I guess what stands out to you is, is to the fact that what UNLV has to look out for in game planning against New Mexico. 
it seemed like they're a pretty balanced team. Like they throw the ball decent, they run the ball decent. They're throwing a little bit more this year. They changed their offense a little okay. bit this season. Before they were a, a true triple option team. Now they've gone uh, to more. Of a, they've had a more of a passing element to it. So it's it's you know it's something they needed to do because teams have kind of caught on to them. triple option, huh? Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So <laughs> you know. So you know. It's it's so far. I mean, so far the early results are, are promising for them, but. I still think this is a game that you know we should win. Um, you know they get them here. They won there last year. Now came they had to get a, they had to win it the, in the final okay. minute. But it's still they, and this a, it's a team they've had recent success against. And they're so, better so, than they were last year. Yeah, as well. this is a better UNLV team. You know I, I just I just think that this is a game that they you know if if you want to be serious about going to bowl, this is a game you got to win. And if they want to <laughs> be serious about maybe not competing for a Mountain West conference championship, but just kind of being a strong team in the Mountain West, right. you know, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the numbers. Like right now, Utah State is actually leading the Mountain West because a lot of teams haven't played any conference right. games for the most part. Right. Boise State hasn't played. Uh, the only teams that have played conference games for the most part have <laughs> Air Force has lost, Colorado State has lost, Hawaii is doing pretty well, and Hawaii is always Hawaii. Uh, yeah, they're, love, they're better than expected. Yeah, yeah, and their quarterback has been is, <laughs> <laughs> really good. Yeah, it's, it's almost a throwback Hawaii team in the fact that they got somebody back there just throwing the ball all over the place. Well, they they got the running sheet going again, which you know that's kind of when Hawaii's at its best, that's what you think of is in the running shoot. And, and, and so it's, that's looking like a dangerous team in November. I got you. So uh, what, what other teams kind of stick out with, at you when you're looking at the, the Mountain West Conference standings and the teams that the UNLV is going to play? Like Nevada is 2-2 two two right now. I mean, that's right. a, obviously a rival team. But some of the teams, you know, Fresno State, they're 2-1. and one. They seem like they're playing halfway decent. They are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they smoked UCLA a couple weeks ago. So. Uh, I guess that, that qualifies as playing yeah, halfway decent. Yeah. And San Diego State's, going, San Diego State's one of those weird teams that – that early on they kind of struggle a little bit, but as they go, as the season goes on, as they get better and better and better. And you know, this court is going to catch them in November, which is not the time to catch them. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I think it's San Diego State and, you, and, and Fresno State in that division, okay. and then it's just kind of everyone else. Okay. You know, these should be the third team. But Hawaii's looking dangerous. Uh, yeah. You know, San Jose State's really a team that should be at the bottom. Nevada, I have real questions about their defense. It's just horrible. Okay. But they have a really good quarterback, and they have UNLV's number. And, they and, do. and so you can never count on that as a win, as last season showed. So it's going to be, it's going to be hard. I mean, it's going to be a fight for UNLV just to get that number three spot. All yeah. right. So there you have it. UNLV, they're going to take a week off as far as a bye week. Really quickly on the way out, what do you think that they're working on you think really heavy Armani Rogers like trying to get the passing game down or do they have any injuries that they need to try to you know kind of bumps and bruises they need to fix up in the in the off week uh, yeah I think they're this week is kind of the uh, it's not really a rest week but they don't have as, as long a practice as they usually have so I think they want to kind of get the players legs under them again before they go into conference play that's kind of what this week's about I mean of course you put in some game planning for New Mexico yeah. uh, but the coaches will go be on the road recruiting beginning Wednesday I believe so th that's where a lot of their focus is going to be as well. So, uh, you know, it's, I, I, it's just a, really more of a chance to take a breath for them. All right. Well, we'll take a breath now and let you guys take a breath and stop watching this, even though you really should be watching it continuously. Mark Anderson. On a loop. On a loop. <laughs> on a loop. Absolutely. <laughs> Mark Anderson, Rebels beat writer for UNLV football and basketball when it comes around. I'm Brian Salmon. This is Rebel Nation. We'll see you guys next time.